Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. IT professionals, as they make a storage decision, have more choices available to them than they've ever had. They have a lot of features to pick, they got performance to worry about, they of course just from the hard drives themselves, they got hard drives, hybrid, and then all flash systems. So all these choices can be almost overwhelming as you kind of look at them. So we're going to try to give you some ideas on how to pick the right combination that's right for you. Joining me to help with this conversation, I've asked Gavin McLaughlin, he's the Vice President of Strategy and Communication with XIO. Gavin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, George. So we've got drawn up here sort of a, a, a grid. It's, it's actually your grid, so I'm going to blame you for it. But why don't you walk us through it a little bit? Yeah. So a, as you said, there's a lot of choice out there. Uh, we get a lot of people come to us and say, you know, is the future all flash? Is it hard disks? Is it a combination of the two? So on the x-axis, we're putting in some of that choice. And these people that say that hard disks are dead and it's all about flash, a little bit of dramatization. It's a bit like tape is dead was 20 years ago. Sure. So there are different tools that are appropriate. And as we say, Flash is a great tool. It's not necessarily a solution. It's a tool to help us. Okay. But also what we're seeing is a bit of a change going on in the storage industry where software-defined storage versus you know fully featured storage arrays is giving us another axis. Okay. And it's, do we look at storage as being more focused on features? And what I mean by features are things like snapshots, uh, replication taking place in the storage layer. Right, and so um, things that help you get your job done as an IT yeah, professional. Things yeah. that help the applications. Yep. Or are we looking at storage more oriented, oriented towards performance? Uh, and what I mean by that is there is a trade-off. Uh, the more features you add, data reduction techniques are a good example. You can be a 50% hit on performance. Sure. So if you look at it in almost in two sections, this is really the fully featured traditional SAN route. Right. This is more the software defined storage. Okay. So we see to fill out this grid, we talk about here, you know, scale out hard disks. So this is where you have wide scale, you know, banks of hard disks to give you that performance and to give you that risk mitigation. We're seeing people scale out. Okay. But at the same time, we are starting to see it now, you know, scale out solid state. Whether right. it be solid state disk, whether it be flash, whether it be moving into some of the NVMe technologies that are coming in the future. Sure. That here is starting to give us the performance down here, mm -hmm. but it's less about the features. Okay. In this top left, you've probably got what you'd call the more traditional SAM route. So this is your monolithic storage arrays that we know and love and are really designed for that. Okay. Um, but we are seeing an emergence of fully featured all flash arrays. So we use the catch-all term of AFA, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they tend to be more feature-laden, uh, especially with things like data reduction techniques. Okay. So it's interesting that you've now got this grid forming of different choices. And so then now, it, from if, if I'm the IT professional, I've got to kind of look at this grid. Then I can kind of say, you know, high performance isn't as important to me as say features are, but I want some mitigation on performance. So maybe I go all flash array in that situation. Absolutely, absolutely. And conversely, you know, you may have an application that's large file services. There are, you know, you don't need the performance. It's all about sequential loading. Mm -hmm. So therefore, hard disk is going to be a better job. It may be a media streaming platform. Right. Uh, but I want to have control in the application or control in the hypervisor. Then scale out hard disks is a great fit for you. And, and I think one of the other challenges that we see in this space is that if you look at it from the different vendors that participate in the market, that, that the, the architecturally, they address, especially larger vendors that could play in each of these quadrants that you've drawn up here, architecturally there's four different architectures that they're having to deliver to, to hit the market, right? Absolutely, and that is a big problem. Uh, quite often they have their own management platforms as well. Right. So the complexity can really get uh, in, you into troubles that you've got four completely different discrete products to manage. Yeah, and I, th I think that you know what I jokingly say is a lot of times what we see, from, especially from the large manufacturers, is the, the only integration is that they put the same logo on every box, right? You, st you still have <laughs> essentially four different things you got to manage in a whole different way to configure it and things like that, right? In some cases, the logo is even different in the same company, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> True, there yeah. you go. The blue may be a different shade of, uh, you know. <laughs> So then, so how do you guys handle it from an architectural standpoint when you're addressing this market? Yep, really good point. I mean, the temptation is uh, to you know squeeze everything into all flash mm -hmm. and to say, well, you know, all flash gives me performance. I can have features. I can trade off there. So I'm just going to deploy one big all flash array and just throw it all in the bucket. Right. It does reduce complexity. Yep. But it's a bit, you know, the analogy I use is it's a square peg and a round hole. Right. If you if you've got a round hole and a round peg, fantastic. Go buy an all flash array. Right. But you might have a square 
peg right. and a round hole. And the answer is not a square peg and a damn big hammer. Right, right, right. Because you're just going to get damage in that. So from our point of view, what we believe is looking at a core architecture that can adapt. And it comes back to a key word that I always talk about, which is adaptability. Mm -hmm. Have you got a product that can give a single core architecture and then adapt into the feature-oriented world or into the performance-oriented world and can use either hard disks or flash or a combination of two, but crucially without compromise? Because the trick here is you want something that is a catch-all but doesn't actually provide compromise. So I would assume that that would require a, you know, being able to maybe pull off components of that architecture uh, while at the same time having a core that's highly reliable and, and able to deliver scale and performance, that's right? It. So we've been known for years for providing you know, intelligent storage elements, an ICE platform, which is really the lower half of this grid. Right. And it's been proven you know, over seven years of giving fantastic reliability and just mm -hmm. not failing. So you're right, adding features to that is something we've done and added a control layer. Mm -hmm. But the trick here is that if you don't suddenly 12 months down the line need this control layer, mm -hmm. strip it off, repurpose the x86 service and you've still got a, a fully five-year warrantied platform down here. So that would be something where I went with software-defined storage in the future as an example. Absolutely. So you know you look at the software-defined storage world, it's about having storage that gives predictable performance and predictable reliability as kind of the hardware foundation of software-defined storage. Because Many people think that with software-defined storage, the hardware doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It really matters. Absolutely. Great. Well, Gavin, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. So there you have it. You, you, the good news is you have plenty of choices. The bad news is you have plenty of choices. What you can do is kind of look at this grid and figure out where you are. To use Gavin's word, what part of the, what kind of hole do you have, and what kind of peg do you have, and then pick the right solution. The key is to look for an architecture that can really get into any of these situations as one thing. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today.